and at the back you also had a wing and the side plates and let's put the driver here there's the driver and cockpit there you go I should do it uh, rollover bar and here we go now basically uh, wings came at the end of the 60s in 68 they started uh, to turn up or, or end of 67 they started to turn up in uh, formula one cars and uh, after some obscene wings which went really high and stuff like that uh, things stabilized in, in in 70 and basically the cars had wings at the back small wing at the front and that's about it and then a company called Lotus came up with an idea and basically what they did they turned they said why not have this section here also act as a wing and what they did they they, they the, the lower uh, the bottom profile of the car was not flat as in most cars but was actually a wing profile it went like that and up so basically, when the car was it was was uh, racing, air would go through the bottom of the car and go up here, and basically the car as a whole would act as a wing, and that generated massive downforce. Not only not only was downforce created here and here, but also here, the whole car was generating massive downforce. That gave them an enormous advantage um, against their competitors, and that was that was that car was that that thing emerged in 1977, and that was the Lotus 78. And they nearly won the championship because, but they had a lot of uh, unreliability problems with the engines and stuff like that. But then they topped that in the uh, the following year in 1978 with the Lotus 79, and basically. That uh, first of all, that Lotus 78 was basically a wing car, a wing car. Yeah, it just had a massive inverted wing, and that was generating the downforce. What they did with the Lotus 79, which was the next car, Lotus 79, that was in 1978, and they won that championship uh, with Mary and Ready. They created what they what was called what's termed a ground effects car and what's the difference well let me just scroll down a bit with a with a wing car a wing car it's just that you just have the whole car is just one big inverted wing just as like showed it up here and it was generating downforce just like any wing with that ground effects car and there's the ground with a, with a, let me roll down further, some space. With a ground effects car, you had the following. You had the wing, and you had the ground. But the wing, had to be a certain distance to the ground that clearance had to be a certain uh, you know it would have to be certain you know to, to, to the millimeter because through that clearance what happened air came here and then because that clearance was set to a certain uh, uh, distance air accelerated through that clearance and out of here so basically uh, it wasn't just a wing like in the wing car, but it was also using this proximity to the ground in order to accelerate the air further. So the air was going way faster here than in the in the older wing car, and that gave uh, the ground effects car a bigger advantage than than the normal wing car. You know, a normal wing car uh, it didn't use that clearance to the ground at all, or maybe to to a lesser extent than this one. But this one use the clearance very much so and and this air acceleration through this what what this generated was what was called a vin 
Turi effect. Basically, when air, air is pretty loose here, but when it's forced into a tight channel, it accelerates. And this acceleration creates more downforce than the normal acceleration you have through that wing profile. And that's why ground effect cars were then all the norm from uh, 1978, when Lotus initiated, till 1982, all Formula 1 cars used ground effects. They basically used this Venturi effect at the bottom here, accelerating the air, which was pressing the whole car down. And the way these cars looked, I'm just going to try and get it in 3D. So, if I'm going to sketch the car, uh, there you go, there is the... That's where the driver sits. That's the cockpit. I'm just going to draw the driver as well. There you go. And I'm just going to, uh, and then you've got the engine here. There's the engine. And you've got the tires here. That's the rear tire. 